Hello, pilots of the internet, and welcome to Foldable Flight. I am actually standing in Hampton Court Palace in England today. Uh, we just flew from Austria after the Red Bull Paper Wings competition, which has concluded. I'll be updating you on the entire process of getting to the global finals and competing uh, in a live stream on May 28th. That's a Saturday from now, so be sure to show up for that. But in this video, I have an amazing paper airplane for you designed by Evan Bruss. And as always, if you enjoy this plane, be sure to check out Evan's YouTube channel. I will be leaving a link in the description below. Now, as you can see, this is an awesome paper airplane with some of those quintessential features of a jet design. You can see it's got the cool cockpit, the cool tail, but it also has some very unique features as well. Instead of flaring out towards the back, the wings actually pinch in and create a very interesting wing shape. And the result is a plane that flies pretty quickly, but it also has a decent glide as well. Now I would call this an intermediate model, so if you folded other intermediate planes, you should be good to go on this one. If you've only folded easy planes, this is a great step up to test your skills. Okay, today we are gonna learn how to fold the X2. For this airplane, all you're gonna need is a sheet of standard letter size paper, or A4 will be very similar. We're gonna start by folding it right down the middle in half and make sure you line up those corners so everything works out evenly, just like so. And now we're gonna unfold and pick a side to be the front of your airplane and fold in the corners right to that center fold that you just made in the previous step. Fold those down. Okay, and now we are going to fold this point that we just made so it intersects with this point here where those corners intersect. So we just fold it right over like so, crease that down. Okay, so this part that we've just folded up here, our next step is folding the entire section over. So you can just roll it over right on that crease uh, and then just smooth that out. I like to use as a little bit of a reference this crease line here. Make sure it lines up with this one right here. All right. So now we get to one where you have to be a little careful about where you're putting your folds because we're going to eventually fold this together like this and we don't want any of the paper to rip. So we are going to essentially repeat that fold that we did a few steps ago where we fold the corners in, except this time we're gonna to have to make sure that it stands off that center line a little bit. Something about like that. So you have just a fraction of an inch there between the center crease and this new line. That's just because we don't need uh, too many layers of paper in there once we start folding it together. And if they touch precisely in the middle, we're gonna end up ripping the paper. So right about there is good. Just use your best judgment on that so you can see they're just standing apart a little bit. Okay, now we're going to fold everything over and that's where you might end up with some tearing here if you folded those a little too closely together. So if you see that, just go back and try again with a new sheet of paper. Now we're gonna take this edge and fold it up so it falls right along this center line here. Just like that. And some of these layers over here, it's starting to get a little bit thick, so feel free to Crease that down with your thumb. You might have to press fairly hard. Turn it over. Do the exact same fold here on the other side where we're taking this lower edge and putting it along the center crease there. Flatten everything out as best you can. There, that's looking pretty good. Okay, now we are actually going to unfold back to this point here. So we're seeing this underside of the paper. We're going to take those out like that and fold it back together. The reason is here, now we are going to take this corner and fold it down. And we're going to use as a reference point, right here you can probably feel with your finger, the layers of paper underneath create a nice natural break point right there. So it 
stops the fold right there. And we're going to move all the way down. We're going to make a crease all the way down almost to this point right here. And the way that I judge this is I actually just take it a fraction of an inch back. So now that I unfold this, you'll be able to see I have a crease line here and one here, and they don't quite intersect. They're close. But we just fold that over like so. Okay. Now we're going to open the paper back up, put these back together here, and now you'll notice we have these new crease lines that we just made in the previous step. We're actually going to fold these corners here from right around where they intersect with this layer. So you can see how they overlap right there. We're going to fold them back so you can still see this line running up that we just made in our previous step. We want to still be able to see that line. Do the same on the other side here. Fold it up just so we can still see this crease line running all the way from this corner to the back edge. Okay. Now let's fold together, fold these up as we did in the last steps, and then take this newly creased triangle here and push it down right through the middle. You can follow the crease that you just made a few steps ago, and it should end up falling below and roughly lining up with this little triangle that's sticking out here. Doesn't match up perfectly, but it's pretty close. Okay, let's fold our wings here. Just like we did when we were judging where to put this fold line, where you felt for the layers of paper underneath, where it likes to fold naturally, that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna fold this corner down so it intersects this line, and we're gonna use as a reference this little point right here where it runs into those bottom layers and it won't fold anymore. So we're just gonna use that point and then crease across so it looks something like that. Now we're actually going to pick up this edge and crease it back just so it falls along the upper edge now, essentially just folding right back the way we came, making that triangle of paper a little bit smaller. Okay, then we're gonna open that up and actually reverse this fold and squash it down. So instead of being folded up like that, we're gonna pull this layer and squash down like that, and then fold this piece up. Now you'll have another chance to see that on the other side. Our very last step for the wing here is using this little leftover flap here. We're gonna fold it over so this edge falls right in line with that edge. There we go. That is more or less going to lock in place the folds that we just made in that wing so it all holds together. Okay, let's turn it over and do that one more time. We're going to take this point, bring it down to this edge, and we're going to use as reference this little crease point here where it runs into those lower layers of paper. There you go. And then we're going to take this edge here, fold it back up so it hits this edge, like so. And then we're going to open it up, reverse this layer, so it falls open again. Then we're going to take this lower part, flip it up along the lines that you just made, and take this last flap, fold this edge up to this edge. That locks everything in place. Now this is optional, but if you want it to be as streamlined as possible and make sure this locking fold doesn't come undone, you can actually reverse it. So you can take it open again and flip it down the other way 
So it goes underneath, and now it's hidden and keeps that wing together even more. I'll do that on the other side as well. So I open that triangle back up and just fold it around to the back and crease everything back down the way it was. Okay. So if we open the wings up, you should see here we've got a little bit of a slope on the outer edges of these wings. We need to make a tail though. So the way we do that, we'll fold these wings back up. We're going to use the point of these little paper triangles as a reference. Our other reference is going to be this line right here. So we're going to take our point here, fold it up from this triangle tip up so it just touches that line that we just made here, just like that. So you'll see my fold does not fall along the bottom edge of this wing here. It's a little bit below. Okay, now let's open up our plane and fold that right through the center line back up. So when we open the wings, you'll see we have our nose and tail now. Okay, our last step here is to lock everything together. You can see this plane folds open a bit. It likes to hang open and we want it to be nice and tight there for maximum streamlining. Okay, we're going to fold these wings back up and now we're gonna take this little wedge of paper that's sitting down here. If you run your finger along this area here, right at the bottom of the wing, you'll see a line. That's actually the body of the plane through the other side of the wing. You can see that line right there. That's our target. We're actually gonna fold this wedge over here so those points right at the back fall inside that line. So when we fold them in, they're actually gonna be inside the body of the plane. We're gonna take this fold all the way down to this point, but we're not going to fold these triangles here. If you fold these, the tail of the plane is gonna warp all over the place and you're not gonna be able to get it to fly straight. So we're gonna leave this corner unfolded. So that means we're doing sort of a diagonal fold, a little bit like that. And this fold, is hard to get perfectly straight. Don't worry about it too much. Our main point here is we want these layers to overlap each other. So we're folding both layers of this little wedge and then we tuck them inside the body of the plane. And you can make that fold as far up as it will go into the body before it hits this top crease. So you have the maximum amount of overlap there. Now, in order to make this crease stay really well, I always turn it over and I go over it a few times, really making sure I get that crease solid. All right, so now we are done with the main folds here. Our plane is ready to go. It's holding together very nicely. We've got a little place to hold it down here and it's ready to go. Now, depending on how you throw this and how much lift you want out of it, you might wanna adjust the back trailing edges here a little bit so you get some up elevator. Make sure that nose points up when you throw it and it's not diving too much. The way I do this, because I have this line here and makes it really easy, I can actually just fold the entire trailing edge up from corner to corner. Just make a little triangle there and bring that back down. Now, if I refold that wing down, I have a nice little flap here that works really well for adjusting the trailing edge. And I would do that on both sides. The other thing this plane has a tendency to do a little bit is to roll. It doesn't have a huge tail here. So if you're having some roll problems, adjust the edges, pull them up or down, so you stabilize that plane in flight. But that is the X2. Really fun design and it looks great. Thanks everyone.